Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Knights of Horror. Thank you guys for uh, giving us a view today. Um, as you saw in the description, we are going to be talking about Midsummer Scream's live stream. And I'm just going to say this. Wow, what a day it was. What a day, um, man. In my, what a day. It was really long. I think it started at 11 this morning, ended at like 6. So it definitely felt like a day of Midsummer. Um, and in just my own personal opinion, I think it was very much well needed for everyone in the Hong community. Um, because not only do we get that taste of Midsummer Scream, as, and, you know, with awesome panels like hearing from, like a little behind the scenes of Hocus Pocus, learning about these uh, new book series coming out, Disney Chills. Um, but we also got mini updates from local home haunts and events um, going on in our area. Um, and we got to re visit the, the screaming room from Horbuzz to watch many great short horror films from around the room that around the world room but world that's the word i was looking for um that were submitted um and just so you guys know before we get into anything um if you guys are still looking to submit any of those short films or you know someone that you know is a filmmaker horror buzz is still taking up submissions for that i'm not 100 percent sure if there's a prize or anything um but they are still taking submissions um so you can still participate in that um, but let's just dive into uh, a, a little bit of a review and our opinions about the day. Uh, before we do that, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe so you can watch more beautiful videos like this. So we're going to begin here. Tony didn't, unfortunately, was a bit busy today. He had some other things to do. I was. Um, he was. Uh, we'll talk about the, that later. Yeah, Sammy being the team player that he was, he he. he powered through this entire live stream man i give him props to that yes the only time i took breaks were to use the restroom but thankfully my phone can live stream so i was still watching it while in the restroom and while eating so um but otherwise i was in my room uh laptop open either you know playing a little bit of video games and watching it or just sitting there diligently taking notes because i wanted to make sure that for you guys i didn't have seven hours to spare you guys got a quick update on what was going on in the world around us at this horror. Um, so we're going to dive into this in a few different parts. We're going to first talk about like tour, panels and tours that they discuss and little other miscellaneous things. Um, as well as then we'll dive into some home haunts. And we'll dive into uh, the, the, the big news coming out um, regarding one of the bigger haunts with LA Haunted Hayride. So let's dive into the panels and tours. So one thing we got to hear about today was... Um, this uh, new this book series that's coming out and is in development. It is called Disney Chills. Um, it's written at a middle school level, and I know what you're thinking. Like, what does that matter to you, Sam? You graduated college, and you it can matters to me read because that. I am no good with words. <laughs> yes, it matters to Tony because Tony's still learning. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's written at a middle school perspective, and so that's always a good thing. You know, whether you're, you know, you have you have children that um, would like that or you yourself want to read about it, you know. Um, and so they're written, villain, they're written from the villain's perspective, um, and it's a modern horror. Um, and what I really enjoyed was that the author had said that, like, these had, do not have happy endings. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, like, with everything Disney, typically you're going to have a happy ending. But Disney okayed it not to have happy endings, and it has some really cool villains. Um, the first one is uh, Corella de, or not Corella Deville. Um, what is her name from The Little Mermaid? How do I forget her name? Ursula. Now? Ursula, damn, I'm the worst. And you like that um, ride too, and it's like I know. I was about to start singing, but you know, we're not trying to get no copyright strikes. <laughs> um, and there's a Captain Hook one. There's a one the villain from Princess and the Frog, and there's another couple books in development um, that have already been written, but they haven't been uh, released just yet, so they couldn't go into details on those. But it will be based upon upcoming films coming out, uh, live action films coming out with Disney in 2021 so if you want to do your research and figure out what those are be my guest so essentially be is, our guest oh god essentially is it a what if kind of storyline instead of like the, the actual heroes winning it's the villains winning i guess or no so i, I you know I, i'm not 100 percent sure if it's a what if um I, it's supposed to be written in this perspective if the villains came into our contemporary modern world okay and like what would happen Interesting, um, and so I'm I, I'm kind of interested in these because if you guys know me at all, you know I love Disney. 
and I've become, begun to love scary things right. um, and villains. So I'm really eager to see what these will bring. Um, I'm kind of um, I might buy these for certain someone that may watch our channel um, that is in middle school. Oh, so. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. So um, well. be prepared. <laughs> but, but on a side note, I don't know what they're gonna do because TikTok is leaving. All right, yeah. Supposedly, well, supposedly Microsoft's supposedly, looking to buy it out, but, but that's not what we're talking about. But anyway, that's not that's not the purpose of this video, right? But nonetheless, um, do you have any comments on that? No, that sounds our next thing. That sounds really cool. I, I think it's it's cool to really get an idea from the villain's perspective of things. I mean, you know, you only see so much of the villains in these movies. Like they're usually, of course, obviously the main villain, but it's cool to finally get something from the villains' perspective. I mean, especially uh, fans of the Disney villains. Uh, I know that they have a huge fan base. Uh, they're always walking around the parks as well, so that's really cool. And especially during the Halloween time, that's usually the time where they come out and shine the most. Um, so it's going to be cool to see something based around the villains. I'm really excited, and I look forward to reading it. Even though if it's for middle schoolers or not, I mean, I'll still, I'll, I'll still pick them up, and I think they'll be a, a, a fun and interesting read. I mean, this is from, from the same guy. Who I definitely. I read scary stories tell in the dark, so come on. <laughs> I definitely agree that it, it'll be a fun read. It'll probably, once again, be kind of leisurely because it's not going to be like, what does that word mean? Right. Um, so that'll be fun. Um, but speaking of something else that is fun, um, coming from the world of Disney, um, I know something I'm a fan of and I think you're a fan of as well, um, is they, they basically confirmed that A Hocus Pocus 2 is in the works. Um, there's a script already been done. The original cast has already given it a look-see. And given their uh, their opinions on it, um, and I and I do think that includes Bet Midler, um, who obviously people are huge fans of. She's like one of the, she's probably the main witch of the three, right? Um, and so they they did say that, um, and so and it's supposed to be through Disney Plus. Um, initially, it was kind of like, is it going to be a Disney Channel movie? That was a talks for a few years. Will it be like a Disney motion picture? getting a full release or is it going to be like a Disney plus? And I think they're currently in a Disney plus stage, which, right. which is I fine mean, by me. Yeah. I, I mean, we all know from the last year, Disney plus has been killing the game with the streaming service as far as releasing exclusive content to their, to their uh, programming, uh, of their, of their streaming service. That way uh, people can sub have to subscribe to watch this stuff. Um, and we all know that I think a majority of the world right now has Disney Plus, especially now more than ever during the quarantine. I mean, you have Marvel, you got Star Wars, you got all the Pixar, all the Disney movies. So, I mean, there's just so much to watch on there. There's so many throwback things on there. Why not put Hocus Pocus 2 on there? I mean, you know, the first one is obviously a Halloween favorite. That's something that you always see on the Freeform channel. That's always something that you always see on, on Disney Channel when they do original movies and stuff. So why not put it on Disney Plus? I mean, that's just a great way to market it. Of course, uh, Hocus Pocus is no stranger to Midsummer Scream at all. Um, they they were at the event last year. They did a panel for, a, a, I believe it was like a 20-year reunion or something like that. Or it was some... So it had some it was like some major milestone for them but they did a whole panel on that last year so hocus pocus is no stranger to midsummer scream obviously uh the people at midsummer scream are fans of this film as well so uh that's cool that there's going to be a sequel no word if the original cast will be coming back however uh news to me that i'm hearing now is that they all read it so i'm assuming they're all interested in coming back um and I'm really excited to see where everyone's at uh, as far as this cast goes. It's been some time since we've seen them all together again, but uh, I think it'd be it'd be fun to see this again. I think uh, if if done right, uh, this could be a really big success. I agree once again, Tony. You always are sharing the same opinions on me today. Um, I think it's going to be a success. I think it's just boiling down right now to contracts, and because right. apparently the budget has almost been set, because they're going to get a pretty big budget bigger than they probably would have got had it just been a Disney Channel original movie. Right. Like, uh, well, how it was going to be for some time, um, which is, you know, good to me. You know, more money sometimes it equals better. Um, I know one of the things that um, we've talked about previously, too, is it, it was shot in a lot of places, the original Hocus Pocus, meaning, you know, like Salem was shot on the Walt Disney lot, the Warner Brothers lot, but also, you know, there was some shooting in our area out in Whittier. So. Right. They did confirm that, so that was really cool. That was awesome. Um, but uh, on a less uh, wholesome note now, um, but I still enjoy it a lot, uh, Chucky, we've already talked about this, this is coming back. Um, and so they kind of just wanted to reiterate that for everyone. 
um, because it was the same ex- producer on Hocus Pocus as it is on Chucky. Um, so that will be coming back. Um, and news to me, actually, was I thought it was just going to be exclusive to sci-fi, but I guess it's also going to be on USA. So yeah. it's going to have it's going to have double the viewing options. Right. So if you don't have sci-fi and you have USA, you can watch it or vice versa. Right. Um, so that was pretty cool. Um, I know the production hasn't got to start yet on it, they said, because obviously... With COVID. COVID, yeah. Um, but... It's still in the works. Ideas have already been set. Right. Um, bringing back the, a lot of the, the original Chucky, original other guy, the, the director. So it's going to be, hopefully, you know, a great homage to what people enjoy in Child's Play 1 and 2. Well, I can elaborate more so. news on that, too, because, you know, a lot of news came out last week from Comic-Con as well. Last week was Comic-Con, and they, they released the uh, teaser trailer during Comic-Con week. Um and they said that they're not really gonna, they're not holding back on this. They're gonna drop f bombs. There's gonna be a lot of, a uh, lot of uh, things on this. So I'm assuming it's gonna be premiering late night. Usually, ten o'clock is the hour where they they have the freedom to cuss more and kind of go all out and stuff and, and announce for mature audiences. A perfect example of that uh, what we do in the shadows premieres at like ten o'clock at night and they cuss up a storm on that show. Um, but I, I wait, I, wait, hold up. You just got me reminding me of something that you're gonna really enjoy. Uh, I think his who's the main character's name Guillermo or something like that. Yes, he was on the live stream today. A midsummer stream. A few, he was. How did they get him, moments. man? That's dope. Uh, I know that he would be excited. Um, he didn't announce anything. I mean, he did announce some stuff, but I didn't take note of it. Well, I know that they already announced. He's working season, on them. They're doing a season three. Yeah, um, yeah. I hasn't started filming yet. Yeah, I no, got it hasn't. They, they just got approved for it. Uh, I know that at the panel last week at Comic Con. They uh, were told that they're gonna, they're gonna, they're, they've already started writing it, and they've already hinted at like hellhounds and stuff. So that's really cool. But they couldn't give too much away because of of things. They're just waiting now on uh, to get the approval from FX to start filming. Of course, right now with the pandemic, you know, it's really it's making the things a lot harder to film. So they're just get, waiting to get the approval for that for the safety of both the cast and crew. Um, but I'm very excited for season three, man. Season two was great. Yeah, I, I haven't watched it yet, unfortunately. But he was on there, and it did make me think about you because I was like, if Tony was watching this right now, I'd lose my he'd be shit. really excited. Yeah, he'd be very excited to see him. Love that cast, love uh, that show, man. It's a great show. Yeah, um, and another thing that uh, when we were just going over our little pre-production here, um, Tony was very excited about is this uh, new book coming out called Fright Favorites. Um, what will be coming out September twenty twenty? Um, and it just talks about different like um, iconic horror films and really that. Have like really shaped the genre over the years, um, and in there it provides a 31 day film guide to Halloween. So the entire month of October it covers has a film a day and an alternate. If you don't want to watch that one, there's an alternate for it too. So there's 62 films mentioned. I'm assuming uh, like a director's there. cut or something, you know. <laughs> uh, I don't know about like that. Like it might be like oh, like, watch Creature of the Black Lagoon. But if you don't want to watch Creature of the Black Black, uh, Black Lagoon today, you can watch uh, Invasion of Mars. Oh, sweet. So you got options. Or like, yeah, it gives you an option every day, like one or two of them. Um, like either watch this one or watch that one. Nice. Um, and so that, uh, stay tuned for that. It'll be coming out in September of 2020. That um, might be a Knights of Horror challenge this week, this year for the crew. Uh, everybody picks up, or one of us picks up that book. We see what the, the, the movies are and we all watch them. That'll be very time consuming. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say, like, that'll be very interesting. No, that'll be very time consuming. <laughs> well, I mean, um, it's just because, obviously, that's a lot of movies to watch. And if you know me, that's probably not going to work out. <laughs> <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. We always talk about my issues. Right. Um, but uh, a less less issue thing, and I thought this was really cool, um, is that they also did talk about some tours that are being offered during this pandemic that are very interesting to me. Um, one is a Hollywood Cemetery tour. Interesting. Um, which isn't – it doesn't go into, like, the – like the paranormal type of it. it just talks about like the different things um it's a leisurely thing you know you get to go on a saturday and a it's a night uh, a night gr- tour no it's a, it's a daytime a day tour. tour it's a day tour um day tour be yeah like it's not supposed to be like it's just talking about the history the of different the cemetery people a bit. yeah history of the cemetery architecture who's buried there right what's their histories yada 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 but no the more fun tour is uh, before we get there uh <laughs> We'll get there right now. Um, and those who want to do that, you can go to um, on Instagram at Cemetery Tour Guide. 
um, to check that out. It's with a Carrie Bible, I believe her name is. Or go to cemeterytour.com. You can book your time there. Yeah. Um, it's most Saturdays, 10 a.m., about two and a half hours. Um, I might want to so, do that. Maybe see uh, who, what famous people are buried there. Yeah, it, there's a lot of different people buried there um, from, you know, from the golden ages of Hollywood till today. So, right. um, and, they'll, and they'll go through that, talking about, like, different things that have happened there. And um, so it's like, it's not the paranormal, but it's cool because obviously you want to pay respects to those who've come before us. And right. speaking of those who come before us, that perfect link here, so you know what's coming next here, Tony, is a uh, another tour here. Um via Dearly Departed Tours. Um, you can visit them at dearlydepartedtours.com or on Facebook, look them up. Um, and they do some dark side of Hollywood. Um, they're looking at many different things that have happened. They have a few different tours. They also have some links up on their YouTube channel, I believe, um, where it kind of talks about like different like things that have happened in the history, um, like with like the Sharon Tate murders and like some other, mur- um, some murders that happened a little bit after that. They talk about those. They have a, I know he mentioned he had a video on that, um, that they thought were linked to the Manson murders, but weren't after all. So he talks about those. And so you can do a tour with them. Current, normally it's a it's a bus tour, and there's a lot of people that can join in on these. But obviously during these times, um, social, social distancing, distancing yep. isn't very important. So you can still do the bus tour, but it'll be a private party. So I, I imagine it'll be a little bit more expensive. Right. But that's just cool because, uh, you know, you can go visit, like, where Spawn Ranch was and things like that. Um or all these other just different locations via Hollywood. Because we know I've been to uh, the fictional Spawn Ranch that Tarantino used. <laughs> yeah. Wait, which is really cool, though, because Ted, Ted Doherty was the one that did this panel. And, you know, us on the channel, we're very big fans of Ted. Good to, good um, and love Ted. everything he does. Right. Um, and uh, he had done earlier this year that whole drive, drive around thing. Right. Where he got to drive different locations. And so, you know, he was going to, like, fictional places, and this is, like, based upon the real stuff that was happening. Right. Uh, and so... Just wanna go like to, I, said, I just want to go to Rick Dalton's house. That's it. <laughs> Rick Dalton. Yes, of course. Um, so I think it's like... I don't know how long the tour is. I think they mentioned it might be like four hours this tour. That's a good timing. But it covers like... It covers 45 miles. That's cool. Um, I mean, so there's a lot of different things that are going to go on. Hollywood's into. got a dark history, man. I mean, from hotels mm-hmm. to freaking how, the murders. Uh, it, you know, Black Dahlia happened in, in Hollywood itself, so... <laughs> Yeah, and they, I think they covered that too. Yeah, yeah, and they'll, they'll go over like different things, like where the people worked, where they lived, like right. like the people that were in the cult, and um, you know what. Depending what tour you're doing, you know they, they really dive deep and give you a rich amount of history. That is something uh, that uh, we could probably uh, do for the channel for you guys. So if you guys are interested in that, leave your comments below. We'll, we'll book some tours with the crew. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. I mean, yeah, we'll definitely do something. Hopefully, in the uh, off season, right. pending obviously pandemic. Um, so hopefully we can get this squared away soon. So yeah, yeah. as always, wash your hands, wash wear your, your mask, wear your mask. <laughs> socially distance. All that good stuff. Uh, and, and the last thing we're going to cover in this section, um, for those who have been going to Midsummer, you guys know who Zombie Joes are. They put on uh, usually one of their productions every year um, in the theater. Um, and so uh, Rick West did interview Zombie Joes team over there, um, and they said that they are going to continue on. And hopefully do something this haunt season uh, with their urban death uh, troop here. Um, I know that they've already been doing other things like live streams and stuff like that already. Um, so if those are fans of that. Know that something's in the works. Badass. So that will that that'll cover that. I, I I've never seen Zombie Joe, so I really can't speak on that. But I gotta see I them. Speak. I gotta see them first. I, if I see like a logo or something, I might recognize them. I mean, I've probably seen them in one of these horror dimensions at one point. You know, we probably passed by them real quick. Yeah, no, I definitely. They probably have a booth every year at Midsummer, right? Uh, and they always put on because I know that there's that room where they put on the, the little different like productions, right? Um, they do a production every year. I know that. Um, but going on to home haunts, um, so we're gonna go through these relatively just list off all the ones they talked about, um, and I will preface it with this: this is their plans as of today, August first. 2020. Um, 2020. Um, this is being shot. Um, anything can change. As we know, this is a... This pandemic is a that's... day-to-day uh, thing, so something <laughs> yeah, can change day-to-day. in the next two days, you know, next day. Yeah, so so do stay tuned. Um, Midsummer um, and Rick West said this because he was the one that did all the home haunt interviews. Right. 
was stay tuned to the red summer uh, because they're going to do their best to keep interacting with all of these home haunters and get updates throughout the process um, and figuring out what they're, you know, what they can do. Right. Um, and so stay tuned to that. Obviously you want to stay tuned to the, the Cal haunts list. So Cal haunt list um, and all these other different things that are, you know, obviously cover these home haunts. Um, and so there's that. Um, so like I said, just stay tuned. It's an ever changing situation, but we'll go through uh, the haunts that they had on here. They had, spooky hollows um and so normally they're going to be doing a uh you know a full-fledged maze haunt thing but uh this year they, they will be doing a yard display only nice um and and that'll be the last two weeks of october okay um there's another one this one i thought was a really funny name it was a haunt with no name yet um that's uh that's the name that's of the haunt they, i think so haunt with no i don't know name. if it's a fish I don't know if that's officially their name, but that's what it said on the screen, and so that's what I wrote down. Okay, because it made me laugh. It made me laugh. That'd be a, that'd be a smart name, but okay, I'll, I'll go with it. Yeah, so I don't know if that's officially their name, or if it's a work in progress. Oh yeah, so, they're probably gonna still decide something. They probably can't decide something yet, but we'll see what's up. Uh, um, they are well as well going to be doing a, a yard display, and they made it specific that they would not be having actors, but it'd be kind of like a walk-in dark ride. Okay. Um, and they and they say that you can walk through, take your time, obviously, socially distanced. Um, and they feel like they um, have all the little small details. Um, and so, like some people will just get scared because that'll just happen. <laughs> I mean, if Haunted Mansion so, can scare you, I mean, <laughs> come on. So, but the reason the Haunted Mansion scares me is two things. One, you're restrained. <laughs> Second thing. Well, not that one day you it, went on it. <laughs> and that's it's neither here nor there. Um, and the second thing is, it just makes me feel eerie. It's not that it scares me. I just feel like there's so many people that have spread their ashes on that ride. And it just feels eerie to me. There's that one thousand ghosts they're waiting for. Oh, it's, there's there's more than a thousand ghosts like on that two, thing. Twenty thousand, no, probably a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because people are always trying to get their ashes on that damn oh, yeah. ride. But uh, and just so you know, if you do put your ashes on that ride. And they catch you, then they're going to see it on video. It's a All they're man. going to do, well, I don't know about, I don't know what the the punishment is. All they're going to do is stop the ride, get someone to come in. They're going to vacuum them up. Right. So if in you front want your you. loved, I don't know if they'll do it right in front of you, but if you want your loved one vacuumed up, that's the way to do it. <laughs> that's sad, but okay. Uh, yeah. Um, Scare Ventures also came on, um, and they do a few different. They do two things. They do a a haunted lodge, um, as well as like a, a haunted trail. Right. Um, and they're still planning those dates out. Um, and so if you're looking to go there, um, it'll be scareventures.com. So it's not scare adventures, take the AD out of there. Mm-hmm. All one word.com. And that will be the last three weekends of October for the lodge. Um, and then they'll do a couple more days for the haunted trail. Um, and they're pretty confident that they're going to be having a, home haunt this year uh corona haunts um they do a special effects projection show i guess um and they're planning to to move on um as well as a, a little maze thing and they're going to do a vir- virtual queue sweet uh and they're going to make sure the scratchers are distanced away and they're going to be multi-layered masks which i thought was a very interesting detail that they brought on right so not only so not only they're going to have to obviously have their face and they're going to have a mask to cover their mouth and nose. Then they'll actually have their mask on top. Scary. I think uh, so- now that I'm looking at it, there's one haunt that wasn't here that I think we have the somewhat exclusive of that uh, will be out next Wednesday. So stay tuned for that. Yeah. Um, so stay tuned, yeah. Um, so that was uh, interesting, I thought, in terms of what their details were. Obviously, distant scares is probably something we can expect. But the idea that they're going to make their scare actors wear um multi-layered is going to be sick in my opinion because there's people are going to die that's hilarious that's it's going to be hot oh yeah um, but but I, I will say though uh, another note that they had mentioned is a lot of these home haunts may be upping up their actors not saying that their actors were bad before but a lot of these ones that can do it on a quote-unquote professional basis i.e those who would be working for universal or those who'd be working for dark harbor don't have a job currently yeah. for october 
So I know that some of these home haunts are trying to scoop them up. So you, you know can, what? You we keep saying it. This is the year of the the home haunts, man. Well, no, they, and they definitely were ma- mentioning that throughout the live stream. Is that you know, with a lot of these bigger haunts not announcing they're not happening this year thus far, uh, it's going to be the year of the home haunt to to really carry on that portion of Halloween. Right. Um, and you know, and I think that's a burden that they're all willing to take, uh, and they're willing to change and adapt you know what i mean like some of these ones that are normally going to be you know your 19 by 32 walkthrough right are going to be moving to yard displays um and so um that'll be good um another one we heard from today was insane haunt productions nice uh they're still on the fence about whether or not they'll have actors but they're definitely aiming to have a walkthrough so regardless of actors or no actors you're going to be able to walk through and enjoy that all right uh, uh one i was very excited for um uh, because just because i really loved their facade last year at midsummer is the the dredge society uh okay. last year at, at midsummer if you had gone to midsummer they did the um the fear fest uh like 1980 something it was a, it was a movie theater kind of like your old school yeah. movie theater with the, the marquee yeah. thing yeah like the 80s um and they had the posters and of all be, the films and everything. Yes, yeah, so they're going to be doing a 1941 here, Fear Fest 1941, which will be their second part in the series. And that, um, um, so if you want to check them out, it's the Dreich Society. We can go ahead and leave that below if you'd like us to on in, um, their Instagram. They're going to be running uh, two nights, or one media night on Friday, Friday the 30th, and then the 31st. And they already made their announcement on what they will be doing next year. And next year they'll be doing a Grindhouse Fest. Fuck yeah, dude. I love Grindhouse. Um, so that's going to be all just cheesy yeah. B-movies. Um, and they're, own, they're doing their own originals. Um, Even better. So, so that's kind of going to kind of get our uh, our way of that one maze over in Orlando that they did. You remember the one I'm talking about? Uh, S- uh, Cinema Slaughter? Slaughter Cinema or something like that? No, I don't. But I'm, I'm sure it was great. It, yeah, basically um, that's what it was. It was kind of like the B horror movies, and you go through all these horror movies, and it was all original horror movie ideas at, at HHN over there in, in Orlando. That's sick. So it was called Slot. That's sick. Um, that's gonna be sick. I'm down. Um, and they already announced what their facade is going to look like because I think that's what they're known for. Right. You know, based upon last year's facade and the facade they're bringing in next year, it's going to be bigger than last year, and it's going to be a drive through cinema um so if you want to see the pics they already put them up on their website wow that's dope uh they already put up the little sketch on what it's going to look like right. apparently the, the one sad part though they did mention was their elevator broke which i think was a really cool part of their thing last year unfortunately tony nor i got to go through it but I, I heard it was a really cool part of what their maze was right so they're gonna try to bring that back for next year but it might be two years out just to pay you know depending on expenses and this is uh, this is in october right <laughs> Yes, October 30th is a media night. Okay. And the 31st, um, they'll be doing it. So they're only going to be doing one night only. Not, nights of Horror will try to be there. Either if we get accepted for media or not, we're going to go there. I want to check it out. Yeah, because it was definitely something we really were kind of sad that we missed last year. Yeah, it was definitely um, something I really wanted to go through. I can tell you that. Same. Um, uh, another uh, maze I was there on last year, I know definitely, was uh, Desert Decay Manor. Yeah. Um, um, and they're going to be doing four nights, so they should be doing the 30th, 31st, and then the weekend prior. Um, and if you are a, a haunter and you're going to be doing your own home haunt, they made their uh, they made a night. They're going to be doing a special night for um, for you guys. Um, so just let them know, and you can go drive on out there and get a special night. And they'll go. They'll do like lights on walkthroughs for you guys and things like that. To, to talk about all the different things they're doing so that you'd be able to check them out. Um, and they mentioned in terms of um, COVID, they're going to be doing what, what I expect a lot of people to be doing. Masks obviously are going to be required to, because I feel like that's the state mandate in California. Right. And small parties spaced out. Um, one a little bit closer to home for us that's going to be going on is called Realm of Shadows, which will be in Bellflower. Um and they're, they're full-fledged trying to go for this. They said um, 100%. Um, their name of there is Hamray Manor. It's going to be their theme. Um, you can go on their website here, um, realmofshadows.com. 
to check that out or ROS underscore haunt on Instagram um, and to see more about their mind, keep up to date on what's going on. But I know that they already have a promo out on realm of shadows.com. Cause I did visit it. Um, and um, their address will also be on there as well. Um, I, I know it's, like I said, it's in some golf It's going to be off of like Palace for days and Woodruff, I believe. So that's right. Not the too... road for me. You don't got to tell me twice. I'll be there too. <laughs> Yeah, I'm and they, to they, Hollywood, I'm good. Yeah, they already announced their dates as well, October 23rd through 25th, and the 30th and 31st. Badass. Um, uh, one that I thought was interesting is, but we didn't get too much details on this one um, because they did just give a little like little promo shoot here. Something called Urban Legends. Okay. Um, they're going to be doing a haunt, a drive-through experience. I, I've been hearing about drive-through experiences. I think that was actually the yeah. one I did hear about. Um, it's called Urban Legends. I don't know the dates yet. They didn't give too much details, but they did shoot like I just gave us a little teaser there. Um, that's definitely something then, we're going to be trying to check out too because it's a new experience for all of us. Yeah, definitely. I think that's super cool. Um, another one uh, just up the uh, the street from us will be well, or originally us. Moment of silence. Me. Yes, just up the street from Tony uh, will be the Haunted Rose, um, and that'll be running October thirtieth and thirty first. Um, and then an update um, from someone we've already heard from previously on Midsummer, uh, Rotten Apple, nine oh seven. Right. We got to just check in with them. They're doing good. Everything's looking good with them. They're still doing still the. Uh, they're doing the walkthrough yeah. as well, right? The the, 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 the the lawn display. The yard. Yeah, they're going to still do a yard display. Okay. Um, but like we mentioned in the beginning, and I'm going to mention again. This is just as of August 1st. Right. Things can change uh, tomorrow, dude, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, and there's more to come about each of these haunts over the next few weeks. All right. Uh, Midsummer promised to keep us updated. So um, Rick West said that, you know, they're going to have more of those live streams like they had earlier on um, where they got to bring people on. Right. Um, and talk about what's been, you know, just get an update on what's going down. So you can expect that. Uh, and then obviously, you know, you can always stay updated with like the, the Cal Haunts list or SoCal Haunts list. Um, and they're going to be providing updates. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I think the, the biggest thing in terms of the biggest event that was talked about was they did have a 13th floor panel. All right. And let's, if hear you guys... let's hear the news. I'm excited. This is the one I've been waiting for, man. I, I made him kind of not tell me anything, really. <laughs> I really wanted to be like reaction right here. So Sammy hit us with the news with 13 floor. I'm hoping it's good, man. Yeah, definitely. So as you guys know, 13 floor obviously um, is a, a national brand. You know what I mean? They're putting on attractions year round. They got some out where um, Sammy's at in Arizona, New Orleans, yeah, Texas, here. They're, you know, they're centered in Austin and Denver, all over the place. Um, and But the, the big SoCal one is obviously – Ali Haunted Hayride, and so they did have John Cook um, and the two the other cook guys. The cookbook was there? The cookbook was there. Oh, man, we know we love us some John Cook, man. What do you have to say? I mean, it was all good. Uh, I mean, John Cook is always a great time. You know, they talked about um, how, they, how they brought John to the team because he wasn't a creative director last year. Right. He, he was still doing Plague, um, but he has been moved on to help 13th Floor Nationwide. Um and obviously, you know, his baby would be Ali Haunted Hayride because that's something he helped revamp last year. Um, I'm just keep, I'm just going to keep filling you in and make you guys keep waiting. Dude, yeah. I know. Dude, Plague is – dude, no, Plague – I'll be honest, though. Plague is really stepping it up now with these, like, yeah. smaller haunts and rake, making them – they're making them big brand names now. They're trying to – I mean, you got a lot of these execs who run Plague that used to work for Horror Nights, who used to work at Knott's, you know, and, and yeah. Queen Mary. So they know what they're doing when they step into these small smaller haunts to make them even bigger. Definitely. So uh, there's definitely they're they're working there, um, and I'll just cut the BS. We'll get to the we'll get down to the, the nitty gritty. He's trying to just roll uh, it off, but now it's it's time. Let's let's see what he has to say. It's time. It's time. It's time. We're gonna get freaking copyrighted. A million dollars right now. I, I know. Um, <laughs> we'll just cut that part out. Yeah. I'm just kidding. Um, but they are still planning to go. Um, they want to put on an event. Um, and so what that looks like, they didn't really go into details, but they're still planning. Um, and as they mentioned, they have the benefit because they could put up their thing in record time. Um, last year they said 
They started with a 14-day build, that moved to a 12-day build, that moved to a 10-day build. Um, so that also equaled 16 to 20 hour work days. Right. But nonetheless, you know, there, there was, still was a haunt last year. And it was um, a good haunt, in my opinion. Definitely. We had a great time. Yeah. A great time. Great time. Um, and so they're still planning full fledged. Um, obviously, there's uh, once again nothing's official until the moment the gates open again, August 1st, <laughs> again. 2020 is when this was recorded. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll see what ends up happening there at the end of the day. Um, but they said at this moment, they're still moving on with plan A. but if plan A doesn't work, they, they the have a the plan B <laughs> <laughs> and if plan B doesn't work, they got a few plan C's. So, and they basically closed it with, Something will happen. Good. That's good to hear. Doesn't know what that looks like, but something will happen. It's really good to at hear. At the end of the day. So I don't know if that means if it's just. Um... Well, I can say <laughs> at this. The, and so, in the front of John Cook's house or. I can or say somebody this. Else. As big as the, as the Griffith Park uh, uh, Griffith Park is, and of course, you know, being where the old LA Zoo and all that, if they really wanted to. And they've probably already talked about this and planned this. This is not official. This is just me speculating. Uh, they could do something with a drive through haunt. Because that park is pretty big. And it is open to do so. Whether it be something small or, or not, it could be something, you know, of a drive through haunt. Where you remain in your car, and it's pretty much like the Hayride, but in your own personal vehicle. You go a certain, you know, you go as slow as you need. Um, they've done it before at Griffith Park with a Christmas event with their lights, so it is possible for them to do a Halloween event much like that. So that's a my speculation. Nothing's been confirmed from that yet, um, but it's good to see that they still have something going. And on top of that, of course, already news that we received from Hayride, uh, you know, within the last two months was, of course, that this this next year they're gonna try to expand the whole uh, Falls um, Midnight Falls lore and story. Uh, so that's going to be really cool. So only time will tell. Let's see what happens. I got a lot of faith. Yeah, and I have a lot of faith, too. Once again, obviously, they said that they're going to do their best to make something happen. And 13 Floors, an entertainment group, just put out a video earlier this week. Um, and I'm sure that many of you guys have already seen it. If you guys are watching the channel. Of how with COVID and everything. Yeah, yeah, how they're planning to, you know, wear masks, you know, clean Sanitize, things. Sanitize, um, yeah. Yeah, all these different things, and and so that's always a bit of hope. Um, and obviously, um, with the, the haunted hayride being outside, um, you know that that does add a, a little bit of ease because you know with the closed in place, you know the air flows an issue and things like that. But if it's open air, you know it gets a little bit better. Right. Um, and so um, that's you know once again, I I really hope we're going to get something, um, and that may determine whether or not. Yo boy comes out in October or not. So, um, well, now, you know, if you, if you come out more, more likely it's sounding like the end of uh, October because that's when all the home haunts and stuff are happening. Yeah, definitely. That, I mean, that'll probably be, most likely be the case. Right. Cause end of October, there's a lot going to be happening. Um, and, and you know, like I said, like I mentioned at the beginning of this, this video is it just felt like a, a, a day. Of just going from panel to panel to panel, except you just didn't have to get up. You know what I mean? You can just it go chill out. It was basically how Comic Con at Home did last week, where they just gave you a yeah. schedule of like, okay, this panel's going up on YouTube at this time from this time, uh, and they give you a whole schedule of the day, and then you watch the panels you wanted. That's how that's how my weekend was last year. I was just certain panels I wanted to watch. All right, this going up at two o'clock from three thirty or two o'clock to three or whatever, and uh, I would go. They would make it unprivate and then go but with midsummer scream they did a legit live stream for about it sounds like six or seven hours um and a lot of people they had the audience there was always 200 people there watching uh keeping their ears open and stuff so uh, uh it sounds like there was a lot of good news given you know the pandemic that you know that people are really trying to save halloween and that's that's what i love to hear i mean of course we got to give our shout out to our boy um uh, over at um, OADV uh, DV Media, uh, you know, I, I hope that was his name. I, I would hate to butcher that, but you know who I'm talking about. Um, he always 
he he just released a video this week that I shared on the channel, and I'll get the name right now. Uh, let's see, what was his name? But you well, know, you find his name. I'll tell you. I'll tell you the synopsis of the video. Yeah. Um, that we posted on the on the channel was this idea of you can take our haunts, you can make us stay home, but you cannot take Halloween from us. It was. I got it right. We can. You did get it right. Good job. I, I'm not 100 percent certain because I, I got it right. Uh, letters are not my specialty. Yeah, no, I, I, I was, I was, I, I was hoping I got the letters right. It was O A D V yeah. underscore media. Go follow him on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. We got really good content. Um, very, very good up and coming YouTuber, right. in my opinion. So, um, stay, stay tuned. No, He's going to he, do some really cool things. A very faithful message that I was 100%, I think I speak for all of the crew here on Nights of Horror, that we were 100% behind. You can take away our haunts, you can take away us going outside for trick-or-treating, you can never take away Halloween. There are other ways around it to celebrate. You can celebrate indoors, you can decorate indoors, you can carve pumpkins still, you can buy candy still, you can watch horror movies. You cannot take away Halloween from any of us because you just can't. There's ways around it to still celebrate it. Over here on the Nights of Horror, if you look at my, my office here, I have a, my whole fucking thing year round is Halloween. So, I mean, I have a wall that reminds me every day of what I love and what I love to celebrate. And that's that wall right there. I mean, I got Horror Nights memorabilia. I got Knott's memorabilia. I got so much memorabilia from everything that we've captured in the last couple of years that that reminds me every day. Halloween for me, you can't cancel it. And you know what's another great way to celebrate Halloween? Is by watching... Nights of Horror videos. Nights so hit of that Horror subscribe button. videos. Great Hit plug. that subscribe button if you haven't already. Right. Well, we, got, we got last year's We got some stuff in the works. We do. We have walkthroughs of last year. We have videos year-round celebrating. You want to relive last year's haunts horror. from Horror Nights to Knots to Hayride to Queen Mary? We have it. And you know what? We also got great things coming up. We got live streams. Podcasts. Um, we got some podcasts, videos. And if you guys want to see something, let us know. We're probably nine times out of a hundred. No, nine times out of ten. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say ninety nine thousand times out of a hundred. Probably gonna do it if you ask for it. <laughs> because uh, that's just who we are. Um, um, and so, um, just let let that be known. We're we're happy to hear your guys' suggestions. And um, you know, if there's anything we can do to make your lives better, let us know. Because obviously, we know it's a tough time, but we're here for you. So, but Cody, was, you know what? That was well, Sammy's I day. Based, <laughs> Well, I went through my entire day here, giving seven hours to type up notes and give you guys a day. What did you do today, my friend? Well, I wasn't a trooper today, uh, and that's because I misinformed what time the live stream started. I thought it was going to be like the last one where it was a couple hours at night, um, and it was actually a full-on day of things. So I had already made plans to uh, go out to Frank and Sons. Um, very good out there too. I saw a couple members of the horror community out there. Uh, you know, I don't. I didn't say hi to them personally or anything. Like I, I don't think they knew who I was. I don't think I knew who they were. But there's a couple of horror shops there that um, I, I walked through, and there was people buying like horror memorabilia and stuff. So it was really cool to see the horror community in general out there at Frank and Sons and everything. And of course, you know, I was out there buying my pops. You know, that's what a thing. And of course, I bought a couple of horror pops. Uh, most notably, my Get Out one. That was really good. But I, I spent the day at, at the morning at Frank and Sons, and we came home. Uh, but at four o'clock today, uh, they did a Killer Clowns from Outer Space live stream. So while Sammy was finishing up the Midsummer one, I was over at uh, Nostalgia Nebula. Go subscribe to them; those guys do amazing reunions and, and, and movie stuff. They got the next one's gonna be a Street Fighter reunion, which is really cool if you ever seen that movie. But anyway, today's live stream they did uh, was a postponed live stream for Killer Clowns from Outer Space. They had the, of course the two cast leads, which was awesome. Um, Mike and Debbie, that was really cool to see them again. Uh, the, the Kyoto brothers were there. John Mazzari was there. Uh, and, of course, the host, Cody, uh, moderating the entire thing, uh, keeping the, the thing flowing. Um, and it was really cool to watch, to see everyone catch up and, and, and see where everyone's at. Um, there was talks of sequels that, uh, if you guys really want a Killer Clowns from Outer Space sequel, from the directors and the, uh, the uh, composer himself, they can't, you know, really force... Or, or do uh, say so on how they want that. If you go on MGM's website, you can actually send them and contact them personally saying that you want this sequel. Uh, and they really strongly encourage that because they really do want to make one. They have ideas and everything. Um, also, some things that we learned today that we've been misinforming for years now. The clowns, Spiky, Shorty, Slim, and Jumbo, that is not their real names. I thought that was interesting. What are their names? Uh, so, 
Um, Spiky was actually never Spike. It was just always just Spike, not Spiky. Uh, Shorty was originally called Tiny, but the fans when they when they were asking that what their names were for the Funko Pops, they they went off the fan names rather than the actual names given to them. So Shorty's actually called Tiny. Um, Jumbo, uh, I I forget what other ones he said, but he said some of them that you see on the pops, that that's not the names they they gave them. Well, I thought his name was Fatso, or is it Jumbo? There's, there's Fatso and there's Jumbo. There's two there's two guys. Oh. Yeah, but uh, I, I thought Shorty being actually called Tiny was a uh, really shocker. So that is that mean the Funko Pop's gonna go up in value? I mean, the filmmakers themselves said his name's Tiny. It's a misprint. It's a misprint. So I have it, and I <laughs> want it to go up in value as part of my collection. <laughs> but <laughs> nonetheless, great live stream. Uh, nostalgia, uh, nostalgia Nebula. Follow them on Instagram. Follow them on YouTube. Uh, they just they they did a black uh, uh, history um, and and horror. One a couple weeks ago, hosted by Ivan Tree's Little Littles, which was awesome from Horror Movies and Beyond, um, and I think that was a great panel as well to see a lot of the notable, um, um, awesome black filmmakers and uh, and writers as well. So that was a really cool panel to promote that, um, and I really really dug it. Uh, and Ivan Tree Littles did an amazing job moderating it as well. So uh, they do amazing stuff. They're doing a lot of reunions. They're a small channel and they're making, they're raising money for the Frida Cinema, which is a currently closed right now that hosts a lot of throwback movies with, with cast and crew Q&As after. Um, but they're currently not open, so they're trying to raise money for them. So if you guys have a few extra bucks, today I actually donated a couple bucks uh, to Frida Cinema uh, to keep cinematography alive and all that. I mean, I'm a huge supporter of filmmaking and stuff. I want to be a filmmaker. So um, if you guys go check out these live streams, if you guys have the extra cash, which I know right now it's a very tough time, but if you guys have like a, a few extra bucks to spare, um, they would be happy to take any donation they can get um, just to kind of save them and keep them open because they do amazing duff, stuff at the Frida Cinema. I'm always seeing stuff advertised before the pandemic went down of, of a lot of great um, you know, throwback movies with cast and crew Q&As afterwards. So, yeah, uh, it, it, all in all, it was a great live stream, though. It was cool to see uh, a lot of commentary and, and learn a lot more facts, a lot of stuff that was originally cut from the movie. Uh, the Kyoto Brothers had a freaking uh, a, a cameo that was cut from the movie. Never knew that. It was at the scene where Jumbo was actually going to hit the little girl with a mallet. Um, and they also had a scene at the same part where uh, Jumbo was actually supposed to go ape shit after that because he didn't get to kill her. He was gonna actually going to destroy like the rocking horse that he was sitting on and everything. And they were going to show a more evil side of that. Um, there's also talks that I guess originally planned they wanted to make a Killer Clowns from Outer Space uh, kids uh, animated show, but they felt it wouldn't have worked because of how violent they are. So um, there's a lot of great stuff in here. It, the, if you really want to rewatch it, it's on their channel right now. I highly suggest it. It was really cool. But uh, yeah, that was pretty much how my day went. I mean, it was on both ends. We really kind of covered our own things, really. So. Yeah, well, that that is going to do it. Um, we would love to hear what you guys thought of, you know, those who have checked out um, the, the live stream from Midsummer. Um, so leave those comments below. Right. Um, those who watch Nostalgia Nebula's uh, Killer Clowns from Modern Space Union, leave your comments below. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. Whatever you do, just leave a comment below. Like this video. Let us know you enjoyed it. Or if you didn't enjoy it, put a dislike button so we know not to make these videos anymore and uh, go cry in the corner or something. <laughs> uh, but but that, that'll, that'll do it for today. Um, if you would like to stay updated on what we are doing, you're more than welcome to check us out on Twitter at Nights of Four and on Instagram at The Nights of Four. Um, or check out our personal accounts if you can find those. Um, Send us a message if you guys need anything, and uh, we'll stay here. Also, uh, as always, if you have wait, a couple extra bucks, check out our merch shop. We have a lot of great merch up there. Uh, if you want to rock, be below. Yep. If you want to rock some Nights of Horror merch, it is on our merch shop on Teespring. So go check that out. Uh, very, Definitely. Very, all the profits that we make go back into the <clears> channel for us to uh, provide better content for you guys. Um, so really check us out. Pick up some merch. Support the shows. Really appreciate that. Definitely. Uh, we appreciate all your guys' support as it is. Uh, we would be nothing without you guys. 1,200 strong. Um, but, just, but just two guys talking to each other um, about our days. Um, so <laughs> thank you all for coming. It's been your boy Sam, and I just want to say peace out. Yep. We'll see you guys uh, next time on another video. Bye.